there! Glad to have you back with us as we jump into another deep dive into the latest and greatest in immersive tech. We've got a ton to unpack from this week's Immersive Tech Talk show. Definitely a lot to be excited about. Yeah, AI shaking up game development, augmented reality becoming, well, as easy as using your AirPods. You ready to explore how the lines between the real and digital are blurring? I'm ready to dive in. Let's do it. Okay, so one company really caught my attention, Basejump. They're launching an AI-powered gaming platform early 2025. And this could be huge. Think about it. Building your dream game, no coding experience needed. Like, seriously no coding. Seriously. It's all about empowering players to become creators, sharing their ideas, building these incredible worlds. Mm. User-generated content taken to a whole new level. Right. It's like, imagine interoperable worlds where your character seamlessly jumps between games made by, you know, other players. Uh. And get this, they're using a decentralized storage system, so everything created is permanent and secure. So, like, all your creations are safe and sound no matter what. That's smart. Yeah, and they've got some serious backing from community labs who have invested in the platform. Definitely a company to watch, but they're not the only ones shaking things up. AI is also changing how games are marketed. Oh yeah, tell me about Reforge Labs and their AI ad creation tool. Have you seen this? I have. It's pretty cool, especially for smaller mobile game studios. It's like leveling the playing field mm -hmm. and giving them access to you know powerful tools that were only available to the big guys before. Yeah, and they've made it so easy to use. Like you choose a template, upload your game footage, let the AI do its thing, boom. You've got a video ad in less than 24 hours. I'm talking animations, sound effects, voiceovers, even translations for over 30 languages. Wow. It's wild. I wonder if it will lead to even more ads, though, you know? Hmm. I see your point. But if they're well-targeted and not just, like, random noise, it could actually be beneficial for both players and developers. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see how it all plays out. Yeah. Investors are definitely on board, though. They've already secured $3.9 in seed funding. And they're not stopping there. They're working on even more advanced AI to understand player behavior, making those ads, well, more effective. So speaking of AI making headlines, have you been following the Google versus OpenAI saga? Of course. Who isn't? It's like the ultimate AI showdown. Right. And Google's Gemini, specifically the Gemini XP11 Quartin model, is making waves. It just topped the chatbot arena leaderboard, actually tied with OpenAI's GPT-40, with over 6,000 community votes. It's a huge deal. Shows that Google is really serious about taking on OpenAI. Definitely. And the improvements in Gemini are impressive. Yeah. Math, creative writing, visual comprehension, it's learning fast. But, you know, some experts are saying these benchmarks, well, they might not tell the whole story. Yeah, like just because an AI can ace a test doesn't mean it can actually solve real world problems. Exactly. So while these breakthroughs are exciting, we've got to make sure that responsible AI development stays, you know, front and center. Now, let's shift gears a bit. Okay, where are we headed? Something a bit more technical, but super important in this AI-driven world. Vector databases. Vector databases. Yeah, have you heard of them? I have, and they're pretty fascinating. They represent a shift in how we search and find information. A lot of it has to do with a big breakthrough Google made back in 2014, the uh, self-attention model. Okay, break that down for me. Okay, so think of a vector database like a, a super organized filing system for your brain. Instead of just matching words, it actually, like, gets the meaning behind what you're searching for. Oh, so, like, not just keywords, but understanding the intent, the context. Exactly. It's well, like if you lose your car keys, you don't just check every single room systematically, yeah. right? You think about where you might have left them. You use context and clues. That's a great analogy. So, in this world of vector databases, how do we keep up? Well, we need to focus on, like, the core skills. Reading, writing, querying. Okay. But they all need an upgrade. Reading, for example, it's not just about the words on the page. It's about understanding both the human and machine context. Right. So like reading between the lines for both humans and machines. Exactly. And writing. Well, that has to be clear and structured so a machine can understand what you mean. And querying. It's all about asking the right questions. So it's not just about finding the needle in the haystack. It's about understanding the haystack itself. Exactly. We need to be thinking in vectors. All right, thinking in vectors, got it. Now let's get back to the world of virtual and augmented reality. Microsoft made a big splash at Ignite 2024. You can now wirelessly stream Windows 11 VR directly into MetaQuest 3 and 3S headsets. Huge news. 
Imagine having your entire computer like right there in your virtual environment. Yeah. And you can even create custom virtual desktops tailored to specific tasks. Like one for gaming, one for work, one for... Exactly. And you can resize these virtual monitors too. Whether you're at home or working remotely, you can set up a multi-monitor workstation like in seconds. Okay, that is cool. It is right. I'm really curious to see how it works in practice though. The preview is set for December. I can't wait. Yeah, but Microsoft and Meta, they're not just stopping at streaming Windows 11. They're working on a bunch of other features like virtual Teams meetings through Microsoft Mesh so you can actually see each other face to face and access to Office apps within the Quest Store. It's like they're building a whole VR ecosystem. Work, play, socialize, all in VR. All in VR, exactly. But while we wait for that December preview, there's another VR development that's got gamers buzzing, especially the Gorilla Tag fans out there. Oh yeah, the Orion Drift beta. Have you checked it out? I've heard good things. It's awesome. New gameplay, enhanced visuals, all exclusive to Quest users right now. Beta testing is so crucial. You know, get that early feedback, let players shape the game before it's officially released. Yeah. It's a smart move. Creates a sense of community, too. Yeah, like the developers really care what players think. You can join the beta right now on the Oculus Store, and they're already planning updates based on, you know, what players are saying. New game modes, mechanics, even seasonal events. So the future of Gorilla Tag is really in the hands of its players. I love that. <clears throat> now let's talk about augmented reality. Meta's got this new project, Orion. They're calling it the, uh, get this, AirPods of AR. Wow ambitious. They're aiming for it to be just as common as like, you know, using your AirPods. That's a bold goal. Yeah, but remember how those little earbuds changed how we listen to music? Meta is hoping to do the same for augmented reality. So less techie, more everyday accessory. Exactly. And they've really packed the tech in. Imagine this. High def display overlaying digital info right on your view of the world. Directions, notifications, all of that pulling out your phone. Like a heads-up display for life. Exactly. And you can talk to it, use hand gestures. So it's responding to you in a natural way. Yeah. And the design. Lightweight, stylish, something you'd actually want to wear all day. They're aiming for a much wider market than, say, Microsoft's Hollands. Makes sense. Hollands is cool, but it's definitely more for niche applications. Right. So with Orion, think navigating a new city with real-time directions, managing documents hands-free during a meeting, or seeing your to-do list while you're cooking. Wow. But of course, you know, cameras, data collection, all that raises some privacy flags. That's always a concern with new tech. Right. But Meta's been pretty upfront about their commitment to security and privacy. So hopefully they can walk the walk, you know? Hopefully. Yeah, but early user feedback's been really positive. People are loving the hands-free functionality and seamlessness. It seems like Meta might actually be onto something. I'm definitely intrigued. Me too. They're working with developers to build a whole ecosystem around Orion. It's like adding a whole new digital layer to reality. It's amazing to think about how these technologies are evolving. It really is. Okay, we've covered AI gaming, the world of vector databases, and the latest in VR and AR. But there's one more piece of the puzzle we need to explore, and this one might just be the most mind-blowing of all. Okay, I'm on the edge of my seat. What is it? Brain-computer interfaces. BCIs. Whoa, that's where things get really interesting. Like science fiction becoming reality. It's both exciting and a little unnerving to think about merging our minds with technology. Definitely. There's so much potential, especially for accessibility and, well, just pushing the limits of human capability. Exactly. And we're starting to see some incredible practical applications emerge. You're right. This is where things get really interesting. I'm excited to delve deeper. Welcome back. We were just starting to get into brain-computer interfaces before the break. Yeah, BCIs. It's amazing to think about what they could do, you know? Like helping people with disabilities, even enhancing our own abilities. It's like something out of science fiction, isn't it? Controlling devices with your thoughts learning new things just by downloading information directly to your brain. Mind-blowing stuff. But, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Absolutely. We need to make sure these technologies are developed ethically and used for good. For sure. But let's focus on the positive for now. Like, one area where BCIs are already making a real difference is in assistive technology. You're right. For example, they're developing BCI systems that allow people with paralysis to control prosthetic limbs just by thinking about it. It's incredible. Giving people back their mobility and independence, it's amazing. It really is. And it's yeah. not just about physical disabilities either. BCIs can help people with communication disorders too. Yeah. Like imagine being able to communicate your thoughts 
even if you can't speak or write. That's powerful. It is. And beyond those applications, BCIs are also starting to show up in gaming and entertainment. Yeah. Imagine controlling a video game character with your mind. Talk about immersive. Right. Or experiencing virtual reality with a level of immersion we can't even imagine yet. And then there's education. Think about how BCIs could revolutionize learning, you know? Yeah, like absorbing information directly into your brain. No more cramming for exams. It would change everything. But let's be real. There are some serious ethical considerations with all of this. Definitely. We're talking about manipulating brain activity here. So consent, privacy, potential for misuse. Those are all big concerns. For sure. We need to be careful, but we also can't ignore the incredible potential of BCIs. Right. It's a balancing act. So Meta's Orion glasses, we were talking about them before, they're trying to make augmented reality as ubiquitous as smartphones. It's an ambitious goal. It is. But imagine wearing a pair of glasses that can overlay digital information right onto your view of the world. Like walking down the street and seeing virtual directions right in front of you. Exactly. Or checking your schedule, reading messages, all without taking your phone out of your pocket. It would change how we interact with the world around us. And they've really focused on the design, too. These aren't clunky headsets. They're supposed to be lightweight and stylish, like something you'd actually want to wear. I'm curious to see if they can pull it off. Me too. But they're definitely going all in on this idea of seamless integration. Like, they want Orion to be your go-to for everything, from navigating a new city to managing your to-do list. It's a bold vision. It is. And of course, there are those privacy concerns again. Anytime you've got cameras and sensors collecting data, you got to be careful. For sure. But Meta says they're committed to protecting user privacy, so hopefully they'll follow through. Yeah, we'll see. But early feedback has been really positive. People seem to love the hands-free functionality and the seamlessness of the experience. I'm definitely intrigued. It sounds like they might be onto something big here. I think so too. And they're working with developers to create a whole ecosystem around Orion, you know, with all kinds of apps and experiences. It's like building a whole new digital world on top of the real one. Exactly. It's amazing to see how fast this technology is moving. From AI-powered gaming to these mind-bending BCIs, the possibilities seem endless. It really feels like we're on the cusp of something big, a real technological revolution. And it's happening right now. The future's unfolding right before our eyes. It's exciting and a little bit scary all at the same time. Definitely. But I can't wait to see what happens next. Me neither. All right, let's take a closer look at some of the specific advancements driving this immersive tech revolution, like how AI is being used to create more realistic and engaging virtual worlds. And then we'll dive even deeper into the world of brain-computer interfaces. Okay, let's do it. Welcome back. We left off talking about the incredible potential of brain-computer interfaces. Yeah, BCI is definitely one of the most mind-boggling areas of immersive tech. Right. Imagine controlling devices with your thoughts, learning new things just by, like, downloading info directly into your brain. It's wild. And it's not just science fiction anymore. We're seeing real applications emerge, especially for people with disabilities. Yeah, that's what blows me away. Like, Researchers have developed systems that allow people with paralysis to control prosthetic limbs with their mind. It's amazing. Giving people back their mobility and independence, that's powerful. It is. And it's not just for physical disabilities either. BCIs can help people with communication disorders too. Imagine being able to share your thoughts even if you can't speak or write. It's life-changing technology, really. Absolutely. And beyond those applications, BCIs are starting to pop up in gaming and entertainment. Oh, yeah, like controlling a video game character with your mind. Talk about immersive. Right. Or experiencing virtual reality with a level of immersion we can only dream of right now. And think about education. Imagine learning a new language or skill just by, like, absorbing the information directly into your brain. It would revolutionize learning, but you know, we have to talk about the ethical side of all this. Manipulating brain activity, it's a big deal. You're right. We have to be super careful about consent, privacy, and the potential for misuse. It's a powerful technology, and we need to make sure it's used responsibly. No doubt. But the potential benefits are huge. We can't just ignore that. Definitely not. So one of the biggest challenges right now is, well, the human brain itself is incredibly complex. We're only just starting to understand how it works. Like the final frontier, right? Exactly. So reading and interpreting brain activity, it's not as easy as just like plugging in a cable and downloading information. Not quite. We're not in the matrix just yet. Current BCI systems are still limited, you know, in terms of how much information they can actually extract from the brain. 
and they often require invasive procedures, implanting electrodes and such. So we're not quite at the point of having BCIs that are as seamless and non-invasive as, say, our AirPods. Not yet, but researchers are working on it. There's a lot of excitement around non-invasive BCIs, using sensors to detect brain activity from outside the skull. Okay, so that would make them much safer and more accessible. That's good news. Yeah, but it also makes you think about the future, you know? What does it even mean to be human when technology can interface directly with our minds? Whoa, that's a big question. It is, but it's something we have to think about. As these technologies evolve, they're going to challenge our understanding of ourselves and our place in the world. No doubt about it. It's both exciting and a little terrifying all at the same time. I agree. Well, as we wrap up this deep dive into immersive tech, I'm just left feeling a sense of awe. From AI-powered gaming to these mind-blowing BCIs, it's clear that we're living in a time of incredible innovation. Absolutely. The lines between the real and digital worlds are blurring and it's changing everything. It really is. Yeah. And as we move forward, I think it's important to remember that we have a role to play in shaping this future. We need to make sure these technologies are used for good, that they benefit humanity and make the world a better place. Well said. We have the power to shape the future we want to see. That's the key takeaway. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder that. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of immersive tech. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible.